was a long weekend. Okay, send me an email, sir, saying that uh, uh, session recording, subject reads session recording, okay? So once again, briefly, for those of you that are not present, uh, be sure to catch uh, assignments 1.1 1 .1 1 .1 through 1.3 inside Blackboard, inside the module. And then there will be a solution that's posted down below. In the resources folder, you'll see the um, recordings from last week. Um, let's make sure we have everybody. Yeah, we do. We have everybody here. I think that. I think the drill that was different is the um, walking through the folks that were present. Anyway, moving right along, what we want to do is make sure that we cover as much of the content today and Wednesday so that we're completely done with our uh, study guide review by that time. So hopefully you've had a chance to lay hold of the textbook and you've started reading the assignment and also um, You've had a chance to engage this, right? So we mentioned before that we're always starting with zero. So you'll notice that a lot of times when I'm showing my folders on screen, if I want a certain order of directories in my file explorer to show on screen, I always label the first directory with a zero, right? And I number them. Zero dash, one dash, and so on. So I want to try to model and be consistent with those things. So one of the things that uh, takes a little bit of unlearning, and, and I want to be honest with you about this, uh, educational psychologists have done research and discovered that if you have to unlearn a thing, it's actually harder. And we are used to the decimal number system. And there are certain things with the decimal number system that don't carry over into the 10 base two system. Now, if you, in case you've had base two number system or, yeah. So if you're dealing with binary number system, uh, there are some differences. We still have number places. So, so we have in the decimal number system, ones, Tens, what comes next, everyone? Hundreds. Hundreds, after that, thousands. thousands. Everything's a factor of 10, right? So as you as you roll off, I'm doing it this way for some of you that are watching the video. So as you roll this way, right? Uh, you multiply by 10, multiply by 10, multiply by 10. The thing that you have to understand about the binary system is that we have places also. But we start with two to the zero power. And one of the things that throws people is this notion that anything to the zero power is actually equal to one. So the first place in the binary system, just to be consistent, is 10 to the zero power. And anything to the zero power, when a value is present, is one. And anything to the zero power is one. But remember, the first value that's stored for any place in a binary system is always a zero, right? So if there's a value stored in the first place, it's one. But there's always a zero value or a null value in there. Now, what's the difference between zero and null? And I want to call that out this morning. Has, has anyone ever heard of the term null? Yeah. yeah. Is null... When you put a null value in a variable, are you actually storing an integer zero in there or are you just reserving it and you're not storing anything? You're blanking out whatever's in the variable. Anybody know? You're not storing anything. Yeah, you're not. That's correct. You're not storing anything in there. All you're doing is saying I have a null value in there, right? But if you have a value in the binary number system and then anything happens, where there's a change, then the zero becomes a one. And just remember that the 10 to the zero, the two to the zero place is one. Now in the decimal system, this is also true. So without getting too confusing, if I have, if I have the decimal system 
and I'm talking about places, the first place for numbers is the ones place, and then the tens place, and then the hundreds place. So 10 to the zero is one. Now that's also the factor by which you multiply any value that's in that place. So if there's a zero in there, and you multiply zero times one, what's your answer? Zero, right? Same thing for the decimal system. If you have a zero in the ones place, you multiply zero times one. Now we do this intuitively. If we have a number 537, that's actually seven ones because we're multiplying seven times 10 to the zero. So we're multiplying seven. I mean, this is literally what we're doing as we're writing it out. Now we don't think through all this. We just do it because we're used to it. But seven times 10 to the first power, 10 to the zero power is seven times one. So if I have a seven in the ones column, that's equivalent to the value of seven, right? And then in the tens column, it's 10 to the first power. So the multiplier is 10. And in this case, I have a three in the tens column. So I'm multiplying three by what? 10, 10 yes. And then I have a five, I'm multiplying the five by what? 100, 100 which is 10 squared, right? So we have 10 to the zero, 10 to the one, 10 squared, 10 cubed, and so on. We know this, we do it, we don't even think about it. The challenge is thinking in binary terms, okay? So when we're talking about binary, we have 10 to the first, uh, 10 to the zero, 10 to the first, 10 to the second, and 10 to the third. And I've color coded these things, right? So if we have a binary value of 1001, zero, zero, one, everybody see this right here? One zero zero one. That is a four place binary numerical expression. And the first place is here on the extreme right. And that's two to the zero. So I multiply one times two to the zero, which is one. So what's one times one? It's one. And then I have a zero in the twos column. I have a zero in the fours column, but I have a one in the eights column. So I'm actually taking, if I, in the previous example, 537 in decimal, I'm literally taking seven ones, three tens, and five one hundreds. And I'm adding them all together to get 537. In the binary world, I'm taking ones, twos, fours, eights, 16, 32s, 64s. And what I want you to do is memorize the doubles. Memorize the factors of two out to 65,536. If you want an easy button in this class, I'm telling you right here and right now, do it. So let's just walk through this together as far as we can go. I'm going to call out next and you tell me the number. We're going to walk it out all the way to 65,536. And why do I want 16 bits in there? Uh, I'll get to that later. Okay, it has to do with hexadecimal and IPv6 and blah, 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 all right? So trust me, any questions so far? So first part of the doubling is easy. We can all do that together in unison because it's Monday and it's good if everybody's on the same page. And if I'm not recording or I'm not sharing the screen, that's just one example of a train wreck that can happen, right? So go ahead. I want everybody to unmute your mics. And we're going to do it as far as we can together. And then as we get further and further, there's going to be fewer and fewer voices. OK, we ready? So when I say go, I want you to just go with me with each doubling until I don't hear anybody. And then I'm going to say next, right? So one, two, four, eight. 1,024, next. Yes, next. 4,000. 
No. 8,192. Isn't it? 8,192. What was the last one? Last one was 4,000. 496 times 2. You're seeing this on the screen, right? Yeah. 8,192 times 2. 16,384 times 2. 32,768 times 2. 65,536. Okay. Now, maybe you don't have it all the way to 65,000, but at the end of this week, you need to be able to take it out to 16, well, out to eight bits at least, right? Then further you go, the more you know, the easier it'll be in this class. It's just a mental thing, but if you're gonna start thinking in binary terms, this is one of the requirements. You have to picture in your mind's eye what that one equals where it is. Put another way, and this is something that I want you to understand. And I've never done this before in the class, so this is a new idea I'm using, but I hope this helps. So I'm gonna open up a blank document, kind of make it big. <clears throat> and we'll get the view here, come on now. Page width, and we'll make the, all right, so everybody see this? Mm -hmm. In binary, that's one. In binary, that's two. In binary, that's eight. No, no, that's four. No, it isn't, is it? All right, let's go over again. That's one. What is that? Two. Two. What is that? Four. Four. What is that? Eight. That's eight. So I want you to be able to look at a binary value. And if you see one, zero, 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 you're going to say that's eight. That's the decimal equivalent of eight. But let's keep going. That's, eight. now I put a space. Nine. Well, I put a space, so now we take eight and we double it. So that's equal to 16. 16. What is, what's the purpose of putting the space down? If that's a great question. I want you to notice. For 10,000. I want to put a space between the nibble boundaries. So you, you have eight bits in a byte, and you're going to start thinking in chunks, especially one, two, four, and eight bit chunks. And that's important to understand is that it's a different way of thinking and seeing the world. And when you get past four spaces, I want you to put a space so that you're intentionally aware that, oh, I, I'm in another nibble now, right? I've started, I've started another four bit value and the first value is zero. So that's 16, what's this? What's this? What's this? Yeah. Another boundary, a four bit boundary. I want you to think in terms of four bit boundaries. So, nibbles, two nibbles make a bite. Always remember that two nibbles make a bite, okay? That's, and they literally call it a nibble. Or they also call it a D word. It's kind of weird, but. The rest of the industry refers to a four bit value as a D word. And we're not gonna get into that right now. This is how much? 128. 128. This is? 256. This is? 512. 512. This is? 1024. And this? I'm gonna throw a curve at you. What is this? That is 2049. Well, so yeah. now let's go back up here. Plus eight. This was 128, this was 256, 512, 1024, 
Another value is 2048, so that's correct, because you have this many spaces. So if you take this one, that's worth 2048. But I've added a one here to 2048. Yeah, so, so 2049. So he is correct. 2049 is what this means. 2049, if I put a one here, what's 2049 plus? Four. 2049 plus four is 2053. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about here? Does this thing go to sleep? Yeah, I know. I have a Okay. So we put a one here. So another way to look at it is this is 2048, and this is four, and this is one. So 2048 plus five, okay? Now, do we expect you to be able to do all of this in your head and to be able to calculate values in binary like a computer? Not really, but we want you to understand the process and we want you to know what you're looking at so that you understand this by itself without all the extra is eight. But like this, now it's 128. And when it comes to things like networking, computers make instant decisions about how many ones or zeros to look at based on that kind of value. And we'll get into that in a minute. Okay. So what we've done here is color coded. If you have 1004, we say that in the second column, in the twos column, it's worth zero. So zero multiplied by two equals zero. In the fours column, there's a zero. So four times zero is equal to zero. So we take one plus eight. There's a one in the eights column. So there's a one multiplied by eight. One plus eight is nine. This value means nine. Everybody get what I'm saying? Okay. Now, might, might be a good idea before the assessment your first attempt of the assessment just to review this part if you're not used to this kind of thing. Okay, we're going to have a worksheet. I've told you I want you to be able to memorize this all the way out. I've actually included it in your study guide. What did I say about the study guide? <laughs> if it's in the study guide, it's going to be on the assessment. Then it's going to be on the midterm. Then it's going to be on the final exam. Okay, so I just want to call it out. Now, there are magic numbers that you'll see over and over again. especially when you start working between binary numbers and hex numbers. Now, we're going to have a light touch for hex. But because computer values are so large, right? We have a, we have a character table that computers use. And the character table converts a 1010 numerical decimal value into a letter or symbol. You've, you've probably wondered how do computers know how to do letters? If all they know is ones and zeros, if all they know is a one and a zero and on and off, how do they, how do they know what the at is, the at symbol for your email or an asterisk, right? When you're doing a wildcard for a search, that character is an alphanumeric combination that's uh, created using ones and zeros and it's called a character table, ASCII character table, right? Back in the day, we had now ASCII character tables have decimal values, but then they also have binary values, right? So in computer. The letter, the symbol for, right? And so these are also control characters. It's not just principal characters, but also control characters, like when you hit the return key, okay? So you have these one and zero combinations. And if you keep going down far enough, you get to the letters, capital letters first. The ASCII table only has enough room for so many characters and control characters. And what happens is that sooner or later you run out, 
So now you have a new international table. Now that we're global and it's internet everywhere and it's IP version six, and we have international characters like kanji, right? Well, there's no room in the original ASCII character table. ASCII is an acronym that means, uh, uh, you can look it up. <laughs> you look it up. But there's uppercase first and then lowercase, right? So I told you that there are certain special combinations that you see over and over and over again. Here's one of them. The binary value of F, right? So um, one of the things about hex that's, we're gonna spend more time on this. Binary only has two values, zero and one. Decimal has how many values? 10, including the zero. So if you don't have a value, zero holds the place, and then you have one through nine, right? So that's 10 characters altogether in decimal. What do we have with hex? We run out of, we run out of Arabic numerals. We run out of Arabic numerals. Because when we get to 10, that's actually a two-digit number. And if we're going to represent the value for 11 as a single number, we have to do something. So hex uses A, the first six letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, six. So if you get to F, we're talking about all ones. This is really significant. You want to see a magic combination? That is an important magic value. And I use that word in the study guide. But if you see F, a reference to F in, in hardware addresses, hardware identities, because a piece of hardware has a code to identify it to the computer system, right? So it's got like a serial number or a fingerprint. That's often expressed in hexadecimal. And if you see F, what it means is that there's four ones as a part of the binary identification of that component. It's important to understand that when you see four ones, it's equivalent to the hexadecimal value of F. But in terms of the decimal, it's 15. Now, how do we get 15? One plus two plus four is seven plus eight is 15. Let's do that again. A nibble with four ones is the hexadecimal equivalent of an F. It's the last number or last value of a single character in the hexadecimal number system. The last six characters of the hexadecimal number system don't include just decimals, but extra letters. And I think, I think that's what hexa means. Well, no, hexa means 16. Hexadecimal means 16. Mathematicians would beat me up right now for mentioning that former comment. In any case, hexadecimal means you're dealing with a base 16 number system. The first value is zero, but you run out of single character values. So and you use letters instead of numbers. The point I'm trying to make is you have to unlearn thinking that letters are letters. Because depending on what they are, depending on what they are, it's a number. Capital F is the number that means 15 in decimal, what we know to be 15, this many, right? But it's also a single value that's amazing. And if we take the 16's place, we had the ones place two, four, eight, 16. You remember this, right? We just did this. And before that we did ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, right? Everybody with me, in hexadecimal, it's the ones place, the 16s place, the 256 place, the 4096 place. We have within the hexadecimal number system, the capacity to represent huge 
amounts of devices. Now, when you think about the number of devices and digital smart, smart things in our home now, uh, we ran out of network addresses five years ago, worldwide. We ran out because the 32-bit network address system wasn't big enough. It could only cover 4 billion connected devices. Right now, we have many more billion people. And if each of them only have a device or two, how many is that in terms of addresses that you need? A whole lot more. But what if the average person, let's say there's 8 billion people in the world that each have two or three devices they have to connect. That's like 24, 32 billion. Only We only had 4 billion to work with, right? So there's an evil necessity here when it comes to hexadecimal. I want you to understand why we're doing this. I'm not just doing this to drive you crazy. In any case, the thing that I want you to understand here is this is the ones place. So if I have a nine here, I'm taking nine times one and that equals nine. But if I have 16s, which is 16 to the first power, and it's echo. Echo is the value for 14. E for echo is 14. What does that mean? That means that the second place here for this hexadecimal value is equal to 14 times that column, which represents 16s. So I got to multiply by 16. So, but don't forget the ones place we already had. So we had a nine in the ones place. Everybody got me? So that nine, we're going to add the nine to it. So, so far we have 233. That's what this represents. Now in the twos place, we have two to the second power, or two, I'm, I'm sorry, 16 to the second power or 16 squared. So that's 256. I have two of those. So if I take this value and I store it in my memory and then I take two times 256, I get 512. Let's add that to what I stored in memory and let's reclaim it. The value is 470, 745. That's what two echo nine represent. Now, I have a nasty habit of using military ways of talking about letters. Because when you say B and D and C and the audio connection with your Zoom or your phone is bad, I, I kind of spell out each of the letters uh, old school military style. So A is Alpha, B is Bravo, C is Charlie, D is Delta, E is Echo, F is Foxtrot. You don't have to use those. You can use your own I mean, if you're going to go into law enforcement, you could say Apple, uh, Baker, um, Charleston, whatever. The point is, is you can come up with your own system. I want you to be in the habit of representing those letters in hexadecimal with a word that comes from the first letter of that hexadecimal number, right? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay, just to keep things sane between us, so that when you're telling me you don't know how that value came about and you say B or D, um, we don't get our wires crossed because that's where a lot of simple problems come from. So there we have it. Here's the rest of the explanation, right? Now, the thing I want you to understand is that the reason that hexadecimal is important is because there's a connection to binary. Now, this is the part that's going to be a hard sell, but I want you to take it on faith. And then we're done for today. Okay? If you know the hexadecimal numbers from 0 to F, and all you know are the binary equivalents of those numbers, like what's a or alpha and hex. That's the same as the decimal value for 10. So that's 1010. Zero, zero. That pattern recognition, I'm going to ask you to memorize a table. Just, just 
15 values, one to 15 in binary. I don't ask you to memorize what zero is because zero is the same for everything all the way across. But what's, what's one in hexadecimal? One. What's one in decimal? One. What's one in binary? One. Okay, that's pretty simple. Now what's two in hex? It's two. Yeah, if it's just a single character, that's all it is. The first numbers are easy. It gets interesting when you get to A, B, C, D, E, and this is where you need to memorize that table, right? And if you know the binary equivalents for the decimal numbers and the hexadecimal numbers, if you memorize that table, then the rest of this class will be easy. If you don't spend the time to do that now, I'm gonna be making references to things and I'm gonna say, hey, you see what's going on here? And you're gonna go, what are you talking about? And you're gonna see there's a pattern there, all ones. You're gonna go, oh, yeah. I see what the computer's doing in this function because it's all ones, right? Now, if you don't know that, if you don't know the basics, here's what you're going to be like in this class. And it's time to drop the class if you don't understand what I'm about to tell you. To get to sixth grade math, you had to memorize your multiplication tables. To get to the second module and keep your sanity in this class, you need to memorize that table. There's only a few values. It's not like all the multiplication table for the decimal number system. You don't have to get to 12 times 12. All you have to do is know from least to greatest, right? And then that way, when you get these other challenges or other activities to perform, you will know because you've got that table in your head. It's like having the math, the multiplication table. Question, can you do division if you don't know multiplication? No. The short answer is no. Now, there are real cute tricks that other foreign cultures have devised and they have they have great TikTok videos and YouTube videos about how you can take two numbers. You don't even have to know your math. You just, you do, you do this manipulation of the numbers and you get the answer and it's magic. But that doesn't work all the time. If you really want to get around in life and you want to get to the point where you can do division in the next grade, you have to know the multiplication, right? So this is the same kind of thing. In the addendum, in the addendum, I'm going to want you I think, the, I think this table I'm talking about is in the addendum. We'll talk about bit shift calculations in our next class, but basically if you, if you know the binary value and you slide it this way or that way, all you have to do is like cut it in half or double it or quadruple it or, you know, you can start doing really serious math in your head by just halving or doubling, which is unbelievably awesome. Have you ever seen people on TV shows and somebody goes, quick, Tell me what's 25 times 937. And they go like this and they look like they're straining and then they just pop the answer out. Have you ever wondered how those yahoos do this? You're about to learn. You could be one of those yahoos. You could amaze your friends and family. Okay? Need you to take it on faith. All right, so we'll close at this point. Are there any questions, comments? Observations before we stop recording, stop sharing. We'll pick up bit shift calculations and show you how this translates to power. A little bit of knowledge translates to huge power on Wednesday. Don't miss it.